Hey guys, welcome back to Boring Story Things starring me, WC Writes, as I try to help 100k of you guys tell your own stories in your own different ways. And today is yet another video as part of my series, The Author's Journey to Getting Published. Throughout your life and your writing career, there's going to be a lot of different questions you're going to have to ask, like, should I write this book? Is this something I should be eating? What is the meaning of life? That last one being super important, by the way. All these questions have different answers. Like, yes, we should write about that because it makes a lot of money. Yes, you should eat that, but do it moderately because last time you had a hard time in the bathroom. Maybe you should go and figure that out. Take some time to think about it. However, answer this one question and you can sell a lot of books. Why do people read your books? Or if you don't yet know which people or who would read your books, why do people read books. When you first start writing, you don't necessarily know who you're writing to. You're just writing stories to put out there into the universe, which is fine sometimes. But most times you're going to have to understand who you're writing for in order to write something that people want to read. Otherwise, you're just journaling. And journaling, while really cathartic and really helpful, does not pay bills. And so if we're going as general as possible, I will give you three tips, three reasons why people read books. Reason slash tip number one, they are transported to another time and place. You can see this with all the best books. Harry Potter does this. Lord of the Rings does this. Historical books do this very, very well. It makes the reader feel that they are not where they are currently. Now, why is this important? For every single one of your readers, you have to realize that they live a certain life. If they're an adult, a working adult that is not in college, they have a lot of stress. Work, family, work, bills, work, hobbies, work, in that order. And a lot of people don't like focusing on that stuff so much. They want to leave the problems of this current world behind and go to another world where those problems are resolved. Unfortunately for some of us, I would be included, most people don't read to learn something unless it's a self-help book. And if you're writing self-help books, I will not be able to help you on this. If you'd like help on nonfiction stuff, go down to the channels linked in the description below because they can help you a lot more than I can. If you can properly put people in a different place that allows them to be in a time and in a place where they currently aren't, where problems are solved and things are vanquished, then they'll be able to like read your books and like them and want them. Now, if this lets you think, actually, I do know who I'm writing to. If it's within any of these following genres, you're going to need to pay special attention to this rule because you will most likely need to go traditional, literary, thriller to a YA audience or middle grade audience. However, if you're outside of those genres or those audience types like science fiction, fantasy, romance, and mysteries, you don't have to stick too closely to this rule. Although if you look at all the major books out there, they have kept to this rule to a T because people are reading for a specific purpose. And it is not to escape their reality, but to be taken to one where things are accomplished in a manner that they would like them accomplished in. This leads us into reason slash tip number two. You need to hit some sort of emotion with your story, which means people don't just read books to read books. They want to feel something, not only to be transported to another place, but they're looking for a certain thing out of it. And if you think about it, the reason why romance is the number one best-selling genre of all time is because it helps people feel something, a certain emotion, think about it, that they may not be otherwise having in their lives. Other great emotions that people are looking for, no matter how old they are or young they are, is comedy, horror, and adventure. If you can have elements of all those different emotions in, usually just pick one that's very, very strong, people will read your book, especially if you really concentrate on getting that emotional beat, emotional response across because people connect with emotions and people. If you can do it well, people will buy a lot of your books. Side note, if you still have no idea who you're writing to, which is totally fine, what you want to make sure is that Whoever reads your book will enjoy your book. And very few people can do this well. So I would hope that you would know exactly who your audience is at this point or at some point in the future. There are four different groups or four different categories that you want to hit and make sure will be satisfied while reading your story. All right, guys. And if today the tips I've been giving you has been helpful so far, hit the like button below and let me know because I will give you more tips like this in the future. So the example I'm going to give you guys is Harry Potter. And you guys knew I was going to bring in Harry Potter sometime. I'm a little bit obsessed a little bit. First is young. You want to have someone who is relatively young. First, she had a young protagonist. They were all young. They were all in school. Second, old. She also prominently featured older and wizened individuals who helped guide people in the process. People like Dumbledore, McGonagall, Hagrid, and then male. The protagonist, 
is male and so are all of his friends except for like one person which would be female she is prominently in the book she gave all of these categories enough attention so that anybody from those four different categories would be able to feel included in the story my caution and word of warning to you guys is this do not expect that you will be able to do this well if you're just starting out in the writing process because let's be for real it took jk rowling 10 years to roll out Harry Potter. She had a lot, a lot of rejections as well. Even J.R.R. Tolkien took forever to write his books, and he hit all four of those categories, by the way. His book got published by the son of the publisher that was interested in his book years after he had started writing that book, but he still needed to like edit it and make it better. So figure out who it is you're writing to, and then choose that person. Easy way to do that, if you know that you're writing to a young male audience, make your protagonist male. If you know that you're writing to a young female audience, make your protagonist female, and usually the age group that you're trying to target. Because as a millennial, I gotta say, if you're trying to target me as a millennial, do not write about a teenager. I will not read that book. And most millennials nowadays won't either. We do not care. Coming up on tip number three, which is the third reason that people read books and specifically why people will read your books. It's that it needs to rank high on the emotional Richter scale. Compared to other books in that genre, in that emotional beat that you're trying to hit, you need to rank pretty darn high, which means you need to do some research. It's a lot easier nowadays than it used to be back in the 1980s, 1960s, 19 somethings because we're now in the 2000s somethings. Back then you had to actually go through catalogs and magazines and library suggestions. All these different things that you need to like look up and look into in order to find the best in every genre that had every emotional beat ever. Nowadays you can cheat or use the hack of Amazon bestseller list. So if you type in Amazon bestseller list romance or adventure or horror or any other kind of genre or emotion, you will get the top 100 for that day. You can figure out where your book would score and if the people who are at number one are actually doing a good job of transporting people to another place in time and hitting emotional beats. That's it. You just have to like rank with them in the top 100 is all you really need. And yes, you're going to have to play the comparison game and see what people are really like searching for. And if your book fits within that ranking, if it doesn't, that's totally okay. You just need to be aware of who your audience is. Then you have to super hyper focus on who you want to read your book. And there's some specific questions you can ask. What are their hobbies? What are their likes? Where do they work? What are they spending money on? What do they care about? What are the things that they're talking about in their social circles? What are they watching? What are they reading? What are they writing? If they're all also writers. Or even the simplest answer that I've ever heard given is I'm writing for me. That means you have a lot of information to put down. If I were to take this exercise for myself, I'm writing for millennial women who like romantic adventures that always are accomplished. And they like to read, watch Netflix, sleep a lot, eat potato chips, talk with friends, work a four hour workday, spend money, usually on books, and or eating out, favorite colors green, which I recognize may or may not be important to anyone outside of myself, and likes Harry Potter a lot. That's a lot of things I already know about my audience and I can really use that to my advantage. All right guys, so if you can now answer the, this question, you can sell a lot of books. The moment you know who your audience is, you know who to market to and you can figure out where to find them. And if you have any other questions about writing or writing devices, check out my two videos to the side here. They're very informative and I have done them before. Other than that, what I'm going to do is write my novel, the one that I'm writing for me. Talk to you guys later. Bye.